Coming up today, as the government rolls out a more than $8 billion stimulus package, President Park Geun-hye once again calls for sweeping reforms and the restructuring of ailing industries. South Korea's Prime Minister pushes his Chinese counterpart to enforce stricter measures on Chinese boats fishing illegally in South Korean waters. First, British Prime Minister David Cameron faces EU leaders for the first time since the UK voted to leave. He's briefing his counterparts on the results of last week's referendum. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Wednesday, June 29th here in Seoul. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. We are going to start this morning at Korea's top office. President Park Geun-hye says restructuring and reforms are the answer to countering the challenges facing the Korean economy. The president made the comments Tuesday at a meeting with her economy ministers in Seoul as they laid out a multi-billion dollar stimulus package. Song ji starts us off. Setting the economic policy direction for the second half of this year, President Park Geun-hye said reforms and restructuring stand at the center when it comes to improving Korea's economic fundamentals and creating more jobs. The government announced a set of measures to boost the economy, including its proposal for a multi-billion dollar budget supplement. President Park said the special measures were inevitable, given the seriousness of the current situation, including Britain's exit from the European Union and the massive layoffs in the forecast following the government's corporate restructuring drive. President Park pointed to the Korean wave as creating momentum to boost exports and the Creative Economy Initiative of Nurturing Startups as a platform of creating jobs. She said the restructuring is not an option but a must to improve Korea's economic fundamentals, noting the need to foster new industries to create future growth engines and place further deregulation moves to boost private investment. Stressing that the new stimulus package is aimed at creating jobs for those who might lose them through the restructuring process, President Park called on the parliament to promptly pass the related bills after they're proposed so the policies can immediately take effect to improve people's livelihoods. Song Ji-sun, Arirang News. So let's take a closer look at the Korean government's economic policy for the second half of the year. The plan is aimed at creating new jobs in the face of a major overhaul of struggling industries, including the shipping and shipbuilding sectors. Our Kim Minji with all the details. The Korean government is vowed to introduce a 20 trillion won or roughly 17 billion U.S. dollar stimulus package to tackle external uncertainties and boost job creation. Laying out the direction of its economic policy for the second half of the year, the finance ministry said Tuesday a supplementary budget of roughly $8.5 billion will be part of the stimulus measure. The extra budget will draw primarily from excess tax revenue, while the rest of the stimulus package will come in the form of increased investment by state-run companies and other means of spending. By using all possible means, including a supplementary budget, we will respond swiftly to deteriorating short-term uncertainties and get one step ahead in preparing for mid-term risks such as the Brexit. The financial support comes as the Korean government lowers its economic growth forecast for 2016 to 2.8 percent, down from an earlier forecast of 3.1. If the projections are correct, it will mean growth in the 2 percent range for a second straight year. Korea's exports have fallen every month since last year due to slowing global demand, and the country will also start feeling the full-blown impact from the government's corporate restructuring drive, which is expected to take a toll on employment and production. On top of that, although the fallout from Brexit is not expected to have a direct impact on the Korean economy, indirect effects cannot be ruled out if it brings prolonged market volatility and weighs on the global economy.
The government expects a supplementary budget to help the country achieve its growth target. But given the current conditions, experts say the impact from the stimulus measures will be limited. The size of the budget isn't small, but when it comes to effectiveness, it's not likely to pull the growth rate up to 0.3 percentage points, as the government hopes. Aside from the unexpected situation in Europe, the global economy is still reeling from China's slowing growth and a possible U.S. rate hike. The government plans to present the proposal to the National Assembly as fast as possible to cushion the negative impact from uncertainties at home and abroad. Kim Min-ji, Arirang News. Now, South Korea's Prime Minister Huang Gyo-an is in China. On Tuesday, Huang sat down with his Chinese counterpart Li Keqiang for talks on China's illegal fishing activities in South Korean waters and also on economic cooperation. The Prime Minister is due to meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping later on this Wednesday. Our Oh Soo-young with the details. Prime Minister Huang Yuan has made a strong appeal to Chinese Premier Li Keqiang against China's illegal fishing in South Korean waters. The two officials met on Tuesday in Beijing to touch upon a number of pressing bilateral issues through a one-on-one -on -one discussion. Prime Minister Huang requested that Beijing produces firm measures against illegal fishing activities in South Korean territory, such as equipping Chinese boats with GPS tracking devices, a measure that both countries agreed upon four years ago. Premier Li sympathised that the indiscreet activities of Chinese fishermen are depleting local resources, saying that China would increase the number of enforcement officers. Moving on to economic matters, Huang and Li discussed ways to swiftly initiate the South Korea-China FTA, which was put into effect last December. They also exchanged opinions on the fallout of Britain's decision to quit the European Union and agreed to discuss detailed measures at the G20 trade ministers meeting next month. During the one-on-one -on -one session, Prime Minister Huang also requested that Beijing actively support South Korean businesses entering the Chinese market, as well as preserving historical sites in China that were significant during Korea's independence movement. Ahead of South Korea and China's 25th anniversary of diplomatic ties next year, I hope today's meeting will be meaningful, reflecting on our relationship and seeking to develop it to the next stage. As part of his five-day trip to China, Huang will also meet with Chinese President Xi Jinping on Wednesday. The two are expected to largely discuss measures against North Korea's recent missile launches and its ongoing nuclear program. Oh Soo-young, Arirang News. North Korea's Supreme People's Assembly gets underway today, a process widely seen as cementing Kim Jong-un's grip on power. The Assembly is North Korea's legislative body. And the session comes 50 days after a rare Workers' Party Congress last month. South Korea's Unification Ministry says today's convention will address the legislation and revision issues of the organizational structure and constitution, among other things. In particular, the event will be aimed at tightening uh, Kim's rule. Experts predict he will take the title of chairman of the Central People's Committee, a position once held by his late grandfather and North Korea's founder Kim Il-sung. North Korea's state-run media reports the assembly will also suggest goals for the country's five-year economic development plan. Now, at least 10 people have been killed and more than 60 injured in a twin bomb attack at Istanbul's Atatürk airport. There were also reports of gunfire at Turkey's main international gateway. Turkey's semi-official news agency says the explosions occurred in the international departures area of the airport. A Turkish official says at least two suicide bombers were involved, but no news yet on whether particular nationalities might have been targeted. No group has taken responsibility for the attack. Over the past year, Turkey has been rocked by a series of terror attacks. As part of the US-led coalition against ISIS, Turkey allows coalition planes to fly raids on ISIS targets, both in Iraq and Syria, from its territory and has become a target of the militant group. British Prime Minister David Cameron is meeting with leaders of other European Union states for the first time since Britain voted to leave the EU. Speaking in Brussels on Tuesday, Cameron said he wanted a constructive divorce from the European Union and hoped for the closest possible ties when the UK leaves the 28-nation bloc. Tension had been mounting ahead of this summit. EU leaders have been saying they want Britain to swiftly notify its departure by invoking Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. They 
said that without it, they would not enter into informal talks. Britain had been hoping to put off the notification until after October or hold preliminary talks before it officially declares its departure. German Chancellor Angela Merkel says the EU won't allow Britain to cherry-pick the benefits during the negotiations, adding that the UK should not expect to abandon its duties while still getting privileges. Staying with that... Uh, Brexit vote and the political establishment in Britain is pretty much in disarray following uh, the Leave verdict. But there could be a degree of remorse among some of the 17 million Brits who voted to withdraw. A recent petition suggests there could actually be. Our Kim Hae Sung takes a look. British Prime Minister David Cameron is in Brussels to meet European leaders and discuss the UK's decision to leave the EU. Britain will be leaving the European Union, but I want that process to be as constructive as possible and I hope the outcome can be as constructive as possible. But other European leaders are pressing Britain for a quick exit. Ahead of the meeting, President of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, said that Britain must make a quick decision on exiting the bloc to avoid prolonged uncertainty. Angela Merkel, the German Chancellor, also said negotiations can only begin after the UK submits a formal application according to Article 50. We will make sure that the negotiations will not follow the principle of cherry-picking. There has to be and there will be a clear distinction whether a country wants to be a part of the EU family or not. Meanwhile, some political figures in the UK have started arguing for a second vote on the Brexit issue. Jeremy Hunt, UK's health minister, became the first conservative politician to show support for another vote on Brexit through his op-ed in the Daily Telegraph on Monday. The minister claimed that the UK should encourage EU nations to reform the rules on free movement for the sake of their survival. It should seek to have a Norway plus option on the table where full access to the single market and control over migration will be granted. That's why the UK should not invoke Article 50 immediately because two years of negotiation before automatic exit is not enough. The unprecedented situation has had unforeseen consequences and caused chaos in the UK's political establishment. It itself is in shock. Many people are starting to say, we are not sure what we voted for. The UK now is in a situation where they, are, they have no leader. Uh, the opposition is also facing a leadership threat. So the UK is rudderless. The matter comes down to one question whether the UK will really leave the 28-nation bloc or will it use the referendum results as a political leverage for continent-wide reform surrounding migration. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News. Now, the curtain has come down on the World Economic Forum's annual meeting of new champions in China. The main theme was still the fourth industrial revolution and how technology is changing the world around us. Our Guan Zhang was there and filed this report. Among all the seminars, sessions, networking lunches and press interviews at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting of new champions, the organizers made available some exhibits displaying the latest in emerging technologies. At the Works in Progress exhibition, forum participants were able to get up close and personal with a wide range of tech, from virtual reality to AI robots. We're here uh, to bring our robot here, uh, which is the, for co-workers. Co-workers means human and robots could communicate with each other is much more equally, and we, they will work together to share in their minds and what they are thinking about. The robot we have brought from our lab here is MyBot. MyBot is a robot designed to carry out sorting tasks. It might look simple, but it has to recognize and avoid obstacles and map out everything in real time. There was even a device designed to help me move things with my mind. First, this device is going to recall my mind thinking push. And so that next time I think push, hopefully it will remove this ball. Scatterbrain that I am, I found it hard to focus at first, but eventually I found the right corner of my mind to make it work. The purpose of these exhibits is not only to show off the latest technologies, but to give participants a real idea of the possibilities. 
When you think about science, you don't think we're as far ahead as we are, but then you see this robot AI who can respond to you based on your commands, and it's like, oh my God, this is like right here, right now. What the World Economic Forum wants to say is that although the future may not be here yet, it's closer than you think. Kwon jang Airang News, Tianjin. Well, those are the stories we are following on this Wednesday morning here in Seoul. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out the website adidang.com forward slash news. We also have a smartphone application. You can find it by searching for Adidang TV. Have a great day. Goodbye.